Good morning, guys. I hope we're all sparkly. I've been asked numerous times to talk about depersonalization. Now, I'm not going to lie, it's a bit of a tricky subject because it is completely subjective, not objective. So how should we tackle it? We'll tackle it with an analogy because that should hopefully give you a perspective. Now, the premise behind testosterone replacement therapy for the millionth time is normalizing physiology. Now, if we go deep, let's go deep. Consciousness is merely the subjective appreciation of subtle changes in your physiology. That can come from outside stimuli and internal changes within the body. Low testosterone manifests its negative symptoms primarily as a result of the physiological changes that occur within the body. That dysregulation then causes negative impact because the external stimuli cause even worse dysregulation. Right, wow, pretty mental. Now, it's incredibly important to understand that there is more to life than normalizing physiology. How we interact with our environment will dictate whether we see things as positive or negative. As always, it's merely a sense of perspective. Is this glass half full? Is this glass half empty? Your physiology, when normalized, allows your brain to make that decision, but it is still your choice. When you've got low testosterone, with low mood, anxiety, and or depersonalization, there is discord within the old noggin. So depersonalization. Can you have depersonalization with normal melandrin levels? Yeah. I think we all have an element of depersonalization. Let's think about a situation in which we all have an element of depersonalization. Our interactions on the internet. Now, the internet is a new form of communication. Social media is prevalent and prolific. And we are essentially communicating with a bunch of strangers. Now, remember when you were a child and your mum said, stranger danger. It's true, isn't it? Who is that person I'm talking to? I don't know them. What is their intention? Is it good? Is it bad? So when we communicate on the internet, we're slightly on the defensive. Or if you've got high estrogen, on the attack. But with healthy male androgen levels, we want to have a proportional response to the situation and having a healthy ratio of testosterone to estrogen and DHT and lowering or raising those levels according to response will help you achieve balance. But what happens? We dysregulate our physiology. We want more, we want more, we always want more. I want more. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again. Your DNA wants you to be strong. It wants you to have the capacity to procreate. So dysregulating physiology is quite frankly retarded. So let's not do that. Let's have healthy melandrin levels so that we can have a proportional response to the situation ahead of us. Now, if I've not slept, I'm a bit grumpy. So my interactions are not as positive as I want them to be. If I've not eaten, I'm a bit angry. 
So my reactions are slightly disproportionate. Eating stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, which is relax, social engagement. We are not supposed to be in fight or flight mode all the time. Now we do need to have fight and flight, survival baby, but we don't need to survive in this modern world, but we still have this innate autonomic nervous system that is firing unbeknownst to us all the time. So when you're faced with a situation such as interacting with a stranger on the internet, this autonomic nervous system kicks in. You can fight or you can flight. Now the commonest reaction, because there are no consequences for your actions on the internet, pretty much, is I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna protect my opinion. I'm gonna state my opinion as if it's fact not knowing that I'm arguing with an actual scientist or not knowing that I'm arguing with somebody who has far more experience and knowledge on a subject, the little snippet I've learned from doing a Google search has now made me an authority on this subject. And I'm going to fight my reputation, my position to the very end because there are no consequences from my actions. In real life, it wouldn't happen. You would have a knowledge and awareness of the person that you're talking to, and you would have a considered discussion. If you weren't in a bit of argy-bargy, you'd probably have a bit of argy-bargy. If it actually got that bad, let's scrap. But nothing is worth fighting over. We are one consciousness. <laughs> experiencing itself subjectively. If you take negativity from somebody, it doesn't actually serve you any benefit. Now we shouldn't roll over, but we should not be bothered by the opinions of strangers. And if you have a contrary contrasting position to somebody else, take it on board, accept it understand it, rationalize it. You don't have to agree with absolutely everybody. As I said in the previous videos, our differences make us interesting. If we were all the same, it would be horrendous. So getting back to this idea of depersonalization, it's the failure to be fully aware of the situation that you are placed in and a discomfort with the feeling in here. Now we do have an awareness. That awareness is innate, but it's lost because we are oversaturated, overstimulated, misdirected all the time. If we understood our physiology, the diurnal pattern of our male androgen levels. As before stated many times, you have a spike of testosterone in the morning with a spike of cortisol to do what? Go hunt, go gather. In our modern world, it's psychological stress, not physical stress. We need physical stress, the cortisol, is causing catabolism, we need to use that. Not allow it to build up to then negatively impact the period when we're supposed to be predominantly anabolic. The constant dysregulation of our physiology is the reason why we are so sick. It's the reason why our species with our highest state of consciousness is so mentally ill. It is absolutely horrendous. Our higher state of consciousness should mean that we can cure the freaking world, learn everything that we need to learn so that we can actually live in peace and unity 
but what do we do? We destroy absolutely everything. Our primitive primal drives are still there, but we don't know what to do with them. Sad, isn't it? So depersonalization. Normalizing your melandrin levels will give you a fighting chance of using your physiology appropriately if you understand what you are supposed to do. And that is get back to basics. Sleep right, remove, reduce psychological stress, use your body appropriately, eat right, train right, understand your place within society. <coughs> Maddie. And work with what? Nature, not against it. Namaste, bitches.